Welcome back to the farmstead. We're glad you're here. In this video, part two, Bob Benny takes us on a personal tour through the Blue Ridge Honey Company where he shows us his drying room, his soap making equipment, his wax melter. We start to look at the warehouse where we get to see all the honey drums that he stores. And we also get to meet a few more people behind the scenes at the Blue Ridge Honey Company. If you haven't already, you can go to our website at naturesimagefarm.com and check out the Bob Benny interview video and the tour video part one. We hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. So this is another room that's different in the summer than it is right now. In the summertime, this is our uh, comb. We call it the comb room. It's really a drying room where we bring our crop in here. All of these fans are in the ceiling, pointed straight down at the stacks of supers. And then we have a floor drain over which we put a big industrial dehumidifier and we'll pull the humidity in here down real low, maybe 25%. That's low for us in this area. In California, that's high. And we'll pull, there's the uh, dehumidifier over there. And we'll pull the moisture level way down. The temperature will be about 85 or 90 and the supers will come in here for about three days before we extract. And we're pretty good at pulling moisture out. In that time, we might pull one to two percent or points of moisture out of our honey. We actually leave part of our honey crop on capped on purpose mm -hmm. because that's where you're going to pull the most, most moisture out of yeah. it. And then when you extract it, that very, very dry portion blends with the capped portion and you come up with something that's pretty good. Our sourwood last year was 15.9. That's really low. That's, I think it makes a higher quality product. I mm -hmm. think your honey's better if you can get the moisture below 18. This is our wax melter. All of the wax that flows through here gets melted in this. I hesitate to open it, but I will because it's real ugly inside. It's a little warm. That's slum gum and stuff on top. Oh, yeah. And this is hot. So. We're just melting big cakes of wax right now. And we just finished our cappings wax from last summer. That's where all that slum gum comes from, yeah. is the cappings. When you're just remelting blocks, you don't get all that garbage. It comes out pretty clean. It works. And for now, it's just the heater in the room in the winter time, which works really well. Now, this is our soap making here. Uh, Jesse, who works for me, makes most of the soap. And he does a really, really good job of it. These are mold things for creating blocks of soap, and then he cuts it with the equipment that he's got down there. And it's a good seller. I don't know how many bars a week we sell, but it's not just a couple. Yeah, it smells really good. I can smell this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I like the purple rain. Actually, I like the, uh, what is it, frankincense and myrrh. Honey almond is probably our best seller. It smells like cookie dough or something. Don't eat it, Dan. Don't eat it, yeah. It's not grain on it. <laughs> so you can see we go through a lot of uh, essential oils. We get all of our oils from Liebermuth Company. It's spelled L-E-B-E-R, Muth, M-U-T-H. And they have a minimum order of $500, but we can make that pretty easy. We use organic oils whenever we can. So this is honey that's ready to go out to Kroger's. I think they're picking up on Wednesday. Um, we get a dedicated semi every time we get a Kroger order. We can usually fill it about halfway. Sometimes it's almost full. I think this time it's going to be about two thirds of a semi load going. And we ship honey out to them probably every 10 days to two weeks. And one of the reasons we do so well in those stores is because we, they've allowed us to have our own individual honey stand. I'll try to show you one of those before we leave, before you guys yeah. leave. Anytime you can get off of the store dedicated sure. shelf for honey and get on your own dedicated stand, your sales will at least quadruple. It could be even more than that. It, it's very, very noticeable. That's important in the summer when we have honey supers in here. Hey, Louie. Louie oversees the warehouse. He keeps track of all this stuff. Hi. So we work him to death. He don't seem to mind. He takes yeah. it pretty good. 
this hot water heater is something you'd see in a hotel. It's a 200,000. It's, it's one BTU under having to have a boiler license. And it runs the floor in the warming room for the barrels. That's all this hot water heater does. So we assemble a lot of equipment here. Louis is putting bottom boards together. This is Cypress. That sells pretty good. And then this comes from Rossman down in South Georgia. We like the so Cypress particularly for bottom boards. And then for uh, deep boxes, we, we use Man Lake. Being a Man Lake dealer, I get a real good price on the woodenware. It's not full, full right now. He just did the inventory a couple days ago, and we're about 1,600 drums. There are times in the season when we're up to 21, 2,200 drums in the warehouse. And there's honey from everywhere. Um, if you look at the little label, we have to label all these drums so we can trace them and track them. All this information means something to us. This is uh, John Riker, Galberry, 2020, drum number 117. We got three semi loads from him, and we number every drum. And then when Louie does a bat, Louie's the one that blends that honey we saw earlier. And he has a log book where he'll enter all the drums in the log book, and he'll create a batch code that goes into the tanks where wherever that honey goes, he'll put that code on that tank. And then when the girls bottle that honey out of that tank, they know to put that code on the jar as the lock code. So we can trace it all the way back to the person we got Smart. the honey from and we can trace it all the way to the store where it's going. Uh, forwards and backwards. I like to say we can tell which chicken laid the egg and we can know who fried it. Upstairs is just full of equipment. We don't put anything super heavy, yeah. but if it weighs a thousand pounds or less, it can go up there. That's a very stout floor. It'll, it takes a lot of weight. How long have you been in this building? Uh, six and a half years. Yeah, six, seven years. Yeah. Louis, Louis actually helped build the building. That's how I hired him. He, he was part of the insulation crew that came in. Yeah. Okay. And we kind of got to know each other a little, and then he, he came over to the house and said he'd like to work for me. And I, I could see what he'd done. He was a really good worker, so you betcha, man. Smile for the camera, Lindsay. <laughs> so David's up in that office. He's the one that does the shipping and the choreographing all the products coming and going. It's our slide. If we only want a box or two, we slide it down. If we want something bigger, we put it on a pallet and let it down. Why did you specify it was for boxes? Yeah. <laughs> Not for people, no. <laughs> Although I have had an employer or two that tried to use it. We had to give, stop that in a heartbeat. <laughs> Lindsay used to work in a warehouse at a different place, and she came here and went to work in the pouring room, and uh, she's a lot happier in the warehouse, I think. It's incredible the systems you have in place for everything. There are so many moving parts in this place, it's absolutely staggering. It's amazing to me that we don't have more breakdowns because there's so many things that can go wrong. But uh, David up there, he helped, he's kind of a mechanic too, so we got an issue with something and we just called David, say, figure it out. Before this building, you were in some other type of a warehouse building? Or well, a smaller version. Yeah. Uh, I like to, I have a contractor friend that says, if you're gonna build your own house, You've got to build three before you get the one you're really happy with. Well, honey houses are the same way. This is my fourth one, and I'm finally happy. Ah. Uh, so I, all the mistakes from the previous ones, now I kind of knew what to do when I came in here. And I spent a lot of hours engineering the flow in this place. Mm. All the, like I said, I'm not an engineer, but I, I did the engineering here. I engineered all the electrical, where it was going to go, and the plumbing, and, and the walls, and everything. And, Gosh, I spent many, many, many nights staying up till two or three in the morning figuring it out. And of course, you know, as an afterthought, there's a few things that could have been a little different, like that light switch should have been on that side of the door, not that side, or little things like that. But basically, for the, the, the majority of things here are working really well. There's so many systems. We've got three different heating systems. We've got six of those big hot water heaters a tremendous amount of electricity and something that really, really helped me was a tremendous blessing is that we're on natural gas mm. and it's really cheaper than to heat everything electric. with natural, even or the propane. hot water heaters are all natural gas yeah. and if I had to do this all with electricity, it'd be just crazy expensive. You need to show David. I've mentioned your name three times, they got to see your face. <laughs> yeah, and there's Nathan. Nathan's the, uh, I don't know what you'd describe Nathan as. He's the catch-all person. He gets all the stuff that nobody else wants to do. He likes, he paints, he does a lot of painting. He works on the trucks, things like that. They came from Ohio. Oh, wow. Yeah. Don't hold it against us. <laughs>
If Tommy was here, he'd call them Yankees. <laughs> Hey, can you help us out? Hit like, subscribe, share with all your friends, and be sure to check these great videos out too.